Hey everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Decided to do something different tonight. I'm going to look at the Canadian model, mainly because I don't look at it. I look at it every day, but I don't really often take it too seriously. But because today it came in, or tonight it came in, and kind of looked like the European did during the day side, I thought it might be worth paying attention to. And this is going through the weekend. Of course, you know, we get mild, and then a little front comes through on Monday, and then we have whatever happens on Wednesday with low pressure going by to war west. But this is now dropping down into the southern plains on uh, Wednesday night. And you'll notice that the ridge suddenly pops up in the west, and you have this northern stream that's bringing down cold air. So suddenly, uh, toward the end of next week, you have this trough that lines up north-south, uh, just west of 80 west from uh, about Detroit all the way down to Pensacola, Florida. Now, <clears throat> the European today, and I'm going to switch over to that. Uh, now the new one is coming in, so I'm thinking it's not going to be done by the time I'm done. But the European had the same idea, really. Um, there's the first system, although it was much deeper with the first system than either the Canadian or the GFS, and then it lifts out. And there you have that southern stream system here uh, from Detroit, uh, it's accessed a little, just a little bit further east, uh, but not much, but it's the same idea. And when you look at the surfaces of both these <coughs> models, excuse me, <coughs> we'll take a look uh, and we'll match them up or try to match them up. You know, the European has had today had a low uh, along the South Carolina coast, which it took, you know, east, northeast, uh, offshore, and it would be a track to the south and would literally on this model would favor uh, you know, more of the mid-Atlantic states, maybe getting some snow up to southern New Jersey, but has the cold eye, cold high draped over to the north. Now, we'll go to the Canadian uh, from tonight, and you can see the difference. It's got a much deeper low in eastern Tennessee with high pressure uh, moving uh, toward uh, northern New Hampshire, uh, and then just kind of sits up there as the low moves off the Virginia coast and heads uh, just south of Long Island to just south of Cape Cod. And, and it does produce a pretty substantial snowstorm uh, for uh, the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeastern states. Okay, so that's the literal interpretation. Of course, we're seven days out, so we don't necessarily buy this uh, lock, stock, and barrel yet, but it has the idea uh, that something is going to be coming out in the southern stream. Now, I'll just jump to the European Ensemble from the day run. And you can see it has a low in eastern North Carolina. So the ensemble is all the different member groups of the European model with all the different parameters. And you kind of average it out. And it's got a low just uh, west of uh, Hatteras. And then it takes it northeast from there. It's further north. So the means were much further north than where the operational was. So uh, obviously something is there. Something's going to happen. And I'm going to say at this point, by the way, the GFS is totally clueless. So I'm not even going to waste my time with that. Um, at this point. Um, I just want to touch on real quick. I know a number of you are really disappointed in how the winter turned out. You know what? It turned out the way it turned out. What can I tell you? You know, this is not something I created. Uh, it's, you know, I, I, I can't approach weather with these sort of unequivocal emotional statements about how things are, are or going to be. I just want to look at what's in front of me. Um, and, and I try to figure out how things are changing and how things are going. I, to get emotionally involved is just kind of a, a fruitless exercise. We're now going into March. Everybody has already proclaimed that, you know, winter's done. And, hey, you know what? March is March. You know, anything that falls, it's not going to last on the ground very long. This is not last year. This is not the winter before that. This is um, winter of 2015, 2016, which is filled with volatility, and we've seen – um, you know, some weird things happen, and there's no reason to think why weird things can't happen during the month of March. March has traditionally can be a very stormy and a very even more volatile month and an already volatile pattern. So you know what? If you're a winter weather lover, and I would just say just enjoy whatever is put in front of you rather than, than just kind of wallow in the, in, in the fact that the winter turned out to be you know, n not the kind of winter you'd like. Hey, you got a blizzard out of it, which, you know, if you look back at other El Nino years, uh, El Nino's like this one, you didn't have. So count your blessings and, and look ahead to see what's going to happen 
with regards to this coming week because you know what after all you don't have much else to hope for beyond the next couple of weeks because after that it's going to be springtime